Shadow Defence Minister Andrew Hasty joins me live from Parliament House in Canberra. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Uh, do you suspect that spy balloons such as this would have flown over the Australian continent? It's a great question. Uh, we don't have any evidence uh, that that has occurred, but certainly it's something uh, we can't rule out. And um, based on the US experience, uh, it's, it's possible. What about this nonsense from China that it's a civilian, uh, a civilian uh, device, a civilian experiment? There's nothing the Chinese Communist government does that's civilian, is there? Look, I think it's fanciful to think it's anything but a deliberate act of statecraft by the PRC, either to collect intelligence through the means on board the balloon or to test the US reaction to, to such a move. But I think to you know, just suggest that it's a weather balloon, I think is quite naive and mistaken. Now, we understand they can control the direction of these devices uh, quite effectively by, of course, altering or lowering the altitude and, and going with the prevailing winds. What do you think, uh, what's your best uh, advice as to what it was looking to do? Would it have been looking to get uh, video uh, uh, photographs and the like, visual imagery, or would it have been looking to intercept uh, communications? It's a really good question, Chris. Uh, I've asked for briefings on this and um, I'm no wiser than you on those questions. But I, I think it's important that we come back to fundamentals and there are a few fundamentals here. Number one, it was a clear breach of US airspace and a violation of their ter territorial sovereignty. Uh, and two, I think the US was entirely justified, first, for Secretary Blinken to cancel his visit to Beijing and secondly, to shoot it down. In fact, I'm surprised it didn't happen earlier. I'm not, of course, privy to the intelligence, um, so there was an operational reason for that. Uh, but certainly um, it was the right thing to do. And um, I think, you know, the risk for miscalculation has, has increased. I, I think this is all very bad. And if we come back to the big picture and, and look at the last year in context, if we go back to, in, in fact, Beijing on the eve of the Winter Olympics, where Xi and Putin met and struck a no-limits partnership. We've, since then, we've seen the war in Ukraine unfold. We've seen uh, China fire missiles over Taiwan in response to Speaker or former Speaker Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. Uh, we've seen this balloon. You know, things are hotting up. They're not actually uh, stabilising or normalising. And, and I think the, the fundamentals that drove the Defence Strategic Update, which Prime Minister Scott Morrison released in July of 2020, um, the, the, the reason that AUKUS was struck with the UK and the US, all those fundamentals are still in place. The authoritarian powers are on the move. Uh, geopolitical unrest is, is occurring. Great power competition is, is taking place. Military modernisation is, is happening. And we have to respond as a country and secure our interests. Yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly right. You're talking, we're talking here about a Chinese aircraft of some description being shot down over the US, a secret aircraft that was put there by the Chinese and has been shot down over the US. We've got the US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, cancelling his trip to Beijing, which would have been a very important step in trying to address some of these difficult strategic issues. Uh, what does this mean for Australia then? Because we're looking at a thawing of relations. We've got the Trade Minister, Don Farrell, heading to Beijing to talk with his Chinese counterpart. Should that visit go ahead, for instance? You, we've seen Foreign Minister Wong's comments, you've seen uh, Defence Minister Miles' comments and uh, the, the opposition uh, supports those. Um, as to the Trade Minister's visit uh, or meeting with, with his Chinese counterpart, we, we must keep dialogue open. And this is the thing, the last thing we want is a conflict because it's going to be middle powers like Australia and, and, and neighbours like Indonesia and, and Singapore and, and other countries through Asia who will suffer. Uh, so our job is to maintain the peace, to, to keep lines of communication open, even as we have been treated pretty poorly by the PRC over the last four or five years. We have to keep talking, and that's why we support ongoing dialogue with the PRC government. All right. Now, I'm not suggesting Australia should lead this. We've been there with uh, COVID-19 investigations, but surely all free nations need more explanations as to what was going on with this balloon. Surely, for instance, we ought to be expecting to hear from all NATO nations that they demand a full and frank explanation from China on this. I think so. I mean, this is very significant. If you go back to the 60s where a US U-2 aircraft was shot down, the pilot Francis Powers was, was captured, he wasn't there collecting weather data for the US government. He was conducting high-level surveillance. Um, it was a spy plane and it was shot down. Um, so when you consider the context of, of this spy balloon, 
sure, there wasn't a pilot on board, uh, but it's no less significant. And I think it's important to remember um, the risk of miscalculation and, and we need to have a discussion. Uh, things need to be put on the table and, and we need to clear the air on this because I'm not convinced it was a, a civilian platform conducting innocent uh, weather data collection. Indeed. As uh, some have suggested. Yeah, exactly, as China has suggested.